With Warner Brothers' decision to simultaneously release their 2021 slate of films in theaters and on HBO Max, there's lots to look forward to from the comfort of your own home. From sci-fi spectacles to prestige dramas and documentaries, here are the must-watch movies coming to HBO Max in 2021 and beyond. Mortal Kombat fans have been not so patiently waiting for nearly 25 years for another Mortal Kombat movie to be released in theaters. Video game movies have a track record of being subpar, and Mortal Kombat certainly has a part to play in that history. Not counting the direct-to-video release of Mortal Kombat Legends Scorpion's Revenge in 2020, the last Mortal Kombat movie was the poorly received Mortal Kombat Annihilation in 1997. Even as a sequel to the beloved 1995 original film, Annihilation was enough of a failure to completely end the Mortal Kombat film franchise. Until now. Ever since Warner Brothers acquired Midway Games in 2009, fans have been anticipating a new Mortal Kombat, which is finally hitting theaters and HBO Max on April 23, 2021. Get over here! The movie is getting off on the right foot by casting martial arts and stunt professionals from across the globe, including Louis Tan and Joe Tasla, and along with actors such as Makad Brooks, Jessica McNamee, Josh Lawson, and Hiroyuki Sanada. The cast is a good indicator that the new Mortal Kombat is fully embracing the fantasy franchise's martial arts tournament roots. The trailers so far aren't showing too much about the story, but if nothing else, expect some impressive stunts and intricately choreographed hand-to-hand -hand fights. If you're a fan of dark modern-day westerns, then keep your eyes on HBO Max. Those Who Wish Me Dead is based on the novel of the same title, one written by Michael Corita and published in 2014. Corita is one of the credited screenwriters on the project alongside Charles Levitt and director Taylor Sheridan. Those Who Wish Me Dead stars Angelina Jolie and Nicholas Holt in lead roles, along with Tyler Perry, Aidan Gillen, and John Bernthal. Filmed in New Mexico, the movie is actually set in the wilderness of Montana, in a forest threatened by wildfires. This white-knuckle thriller finds a teenage murder witness being pursued by twin assassins. Needless to say, that's not a great situation to find yourself in. But at least this teen has the assistance of a survival expert tasked with protecting him. Those Who Wish Me Dead is sure to be an intense ride for its characters, while also being a commentary on the state of the environment. The film is set to hit HBO Max in theaters on May 14, 2021. The Conjuring universe has grown a lot since we were first introduced to the world of the Warrens in 2013. Since then, we've met the likes of La Yorona and Valak, and we've run into that creepy Annabelle doll on more than one occasion. Now we're returning to the main storyline with the eighth film in the franchise, The Conjuring, The Devil Made Me Do It. Patrick Wilson and Vera Farmiga are returning as real-life paranormal investigators and authors Ed and Lorraine Warren. Originally scheduled for a September 2020 release, The Devil Made Me Do It was delayed due to COVID-19 and will now be out June 4, 2021. It's directed by relative newcomer Michael Chavs, who is best known to Conjuring fans as the director of The Curse of La Llorona, the sixth film in the Conjuring universe. The Devil Made Me Do It is based on the trial of Arnie Cheyenne Johnson, who was the first murder suspect to ever claim demonic possession as a defense. The 1981 case also involved the possession of an 11-year-old boy, which is certain to be the source of many scares in the upcoming Conjuring film. The Devil Made Me Do It hits HBO Max June 4, 2021. Before Hamilton, In the Heights was the musical that put Lin-Manuel Miranda on the Broadway map. Featuring his characteristic pop-rap style of songwriting, the story of his first show is much more grounded than the bombastic historical hit. A community in Washington Heights has to deal with the sweltering heat of a New York summer while working through issues of family, race, and class. They're talking about kicking out all the dreamers. But every day is different, so it's time to make some noise. The film adaptation of In the Heights is directed by John M. Chu, and features one of Hamilton's youngest stars, Anthony Ramos, in the lead role. Originally scheduled to be released in the summer of 2020, In the Heights will finally release in theaters and on HBO Max on June 11, 2021. For decades now, fans have been clamoring for a sequel to Space Jam. The 1996 Looney Tunes and Michael Jordan crossover is still the highest grossing basketball movie of all time, begging the question of why it's taken so long for Hollywood to make a new installment. But in 2021, Space Jam A New Legacy will finally bring the Space Jam magic to a new generation. This time, the basketball star at the center of the story is LeBron James. 
Trapped in a virtual reality space with his son by a rogue AI played by Don Cheadle, James has to team up with the Looney Tunes to beat a team of elite basketball-playing algorithms. Directed by Malcolm D. Lee and produced by Ryan Coogler, Space Jam A New Legacy is sure to be a blast for families and kids. Even if you're not a fan of Bugs Bunny and company, there will be something for everyone in this wacky flick, as James's journey through virtual reality will tie into other Warner Brothers films such as Casablanca and Mad Max Fury Road. The game starts on July 16, 2021. Written and directed by Guardians of the Galaxy director James Gunn, The Suicide Squad serves as a soft reboot of the 2016 film of nearly the same name. While the 2021 film keeps Margot Robbie as Harley Quinn, as well as Joel Kinnaman's Rick Flagg, Viola Davis's Amanda Waller, and Jai Courtney's Captain Boomerang, the majority of the 2016 cast isn't returning for the new film. Instead, the movie is opting for a fresh start, with new actors playing new characters. The impressive and eclectic cast of The Suicide Squad includes Idris Elba as Bloodsport, John Cena as Peacemaker, Sylvester Stallone as King Shark, Michael Rooker as Savant, and Pete Davidson as Blackguard, among a host of other actors. A spin-off show starring John Cena's Peacemaker is already in the works and slated for the 2022 HBO Max lineup. Between the cast and the adult tone projected, The Suicide Squad looks to be a funny, bombastic alternative to the more serious side of the DCEU, and, true to its name, already promises a high body count. We're all gonna die. I hope so. Seeming to follow in the chaotic footsteps of Birds of Prey, the largely doomed team of the Suicide Squad is coming to town on August 6, 2021. Reminiscence is an upcoming sci-fi thriller starring Hugh Jackman that looks to be channeling Inception, which isn't all that surprising considering Reminiscence is a collaboration between producer Jonathan Nolan and his wife, director Lisa Joy, who previously co-created HBO's Westworld. Not much is known about the intriguing film outside of its premise. Jackman plays Nick Bannister, an ex-military man with certain professional skills. For the right price, he can offer the chance for people to relive any memory they desire. When he falls in love with May, played by Rebecca Ferguson, things get complicated when he gains access to her memories and the truth about her dark past starts to come to the surface. If you like action, sci-fi, or thrillers, Reminiscence is a can't-miss watch when it comes to HBO Max on September 3, 2021. Only a few months after a new Conjuring movie hits, we get Malignant, and it's sure to scare our pants off. Aside from this being Conjuring Universe creator James Wan's first time directing a horror movie since 2016's The Conjuring 2, it also features a face that might be familiar to audiences who absolutely love being terrified. Annabelle Wallace, who is best known for her role as Mia in the first Annabelle film, has a starring role in Malignant. Juan has said that Malignant isn't based on any pre-existing movie or story. It is a completely original horror thriller. But beyond that, not a whole lot else is known. It's probably best that way, too. There's nothing better to a horror fan than a completely surprising and terrifying movie-going experience. Get ready for some major scares on September 10, 2021. Years after the ambiguous ending of The Sopranos, fans of HBO's era-defining mob epic are finally getting invited back into the life of Tony Soprano and his family. Only this time, it's a prequel. The Many Saints of Newark is a collaboration between Warner Brothers and HBO Films that was originally scheduled for theatrical release in September 2020. Like many of the Warner Brothers features on this list, The Many Saints of Newark was delayed exactly one year and will hit a simultaneous release in theaters and streaming on HBO Max. This prequel to the acclaimed drama series is set in the 1960s and 70s in New Jersey. Penned by Soprano series creator David Chase, The Many Saints of Newark aims to tell a story about the 1967 Newark riots. The film will focus on the racial tensions between the Italian-American and African-American communities of New Jersey and the Eastern Seaboard. The cast is loaded, with Corey Stoll as a young junior soprano and James Gandolfini's son Michael cast as a young Tony. Plus, we've got Vera Farmiga as Livia Soprano, in addition to appearances from John Bernthal, Leslie Odom Jr., and Ray Liotta. Sopranos fans will have a lot to be thankful for this fall, when the gangsters make their way to HBO Max on September 24, 2021. Denis Villeneuve's take on Dune is one of the most hyped movies of 2021, following an entire year of being one of the most hyped movies of 2020. Still, the excitement persists with each morsel of news that comes out. For sci-fi fans of many ages, Dune is a fundamental work, a cornerstone of the genre, and this version looks to get a lot of things right where David Lynch's 1984 attempt to adapt it failed. 
Timothy Chalamet takes the reign as Dune hero Paul Atreides, and Oscar Isaac will appear as his father, Duke Leto Atreides. This will be the first entry in Villeneuve's two-part adaptation of the first novel in the Frank Herbert series. The rest of the cast includes Rebecca Ferguson, Javier Bardem, Josh Brolin, Zendaya, Stellan Skarsgård, Jason Momoa, and Dave Bautista. So if you're ready to visit the world of Arrakis, just remember that fear is the mind killer and that Dune will be hitting HBO Max on October 1st, 2021. If you're a fan of films like Hang 'em High, The Outlaw, Josie Wales, or The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly, have we got some great news for you. Cry Macho is the next Western from Clint Eastwood. It's based on the 1975 book of the same name, written by N. Richard Nash, who co-wrote the screenplay in the 90s with Nick Shank prior to Nash's death in the year 2000. And as you probably assumed, Eastwood is not only showing up in front of the camera, but also sitting in the director's seat. The film will be a neo-western, meaning it's set closer to the modern day than the heyday of cowboys in the 1800s. Still, we're pretty sure the Academy Award-winning director of Unforgiven will handle the century change just fine. Eastwood stars as a washed-up rodeo star and 20th century cowboy. In 1978, he takes a job from an ex-boss to bring the man's young son home and away from his alcoholic mother. The film was shot in New Mexico in November and December of 2020. If you're excited to see Eastwood back in the proverbial saddle, Cry Macho will ride onto HBO Max on October 22, 2021. Slated as one of HBO Max's big releases of the 2021 holiday season, King Richard is setting itself up as an awards season contender. The Warner Brothers biopic stars Will Smith as Richard Williams, father of tennis superstars Venus and Serena Williams. The film is a look at their father's influence and how Richard coached them to success. King Richard features Shania Sidney and Demi Singleton as Venus and Serena respectively. John Bernthal, Tony Goldwyn, and Dylan McDermott are also going to make appearances in supporting roles. Liev Schreiber was originally cast, but was replaced by Goldwyn in October of 2020. Not much else is known about the film aside from its talent and premise. The script was penned by Zach Balin, and Monsters and Men director Reynaldo Marcus Green was brought on to helm the project. Anyone looking for more serious drama fare on HBO Max is sure to perk their ears up when King Richard gets a release on the streaming service later this year, especially Will Smith fans and tennis aficionados. The match begins on November 19, 2021. It's been quite a long time since we've seen a new project set in the world of The Matrix. The pivotal cyberpunk franchise has laid dormant since the multiplayer role-playing game The Matrix Online went offline in 2009, but over a decade later, and nearly two decades since the last movie, Lana Wachowski is returning to direct a fourth live-action Matrix movie. While the film doesn't yet have a title, Resurrections has been heavily rumored as a potential option. Whoa. Although Lily Wachowski worked with Lana on the original Matrix trilogy, as well as most of the sisters' other projects, she is not returning for this brand new Matrix film. The production on the fourth Matrix movie was interrupted by the COVID-19 shutdown but it resumed filming in the summer of 2020 and wrapped up in November. Of course, no matter how fascinating the world of The Matrix is, a new Matrix movie would be nothing without Neo. Thankfully, both Keanu Reeves and Carrie Ann Moss are returning to the series as Neo and Trinity respectively. Jada Pinkett Smith, Daniel Bernhardt, and Lambert Wilson will also be reprising their roles from The Matrix sequels. Sadly, Lawrence Fishburne has gone on the record saying he wasn't asked to return in his iconic role as Morpheus. Still, the cast isn't without its fair share of star power. Yahya Abdul-Mateen II, Priyanka Chopra, Neil Patrick Harris, and Jonathan Groff will all be making appearances in the newest movie when it releases on December 22, 2021. Based on the J.T. Rogers play that took the world by storm in 2017 and won a Tony for Best Play, Oslo is an upcoming film adaptation from producers Steven Spielberg and Mark Platt. Rogers wrote the screenplay, and the adaptation is being directed by Bartlett Shore, who directed Oslo on Broadway and earned a Tony nomination for his work. With Andrew Scott of Fleabag and Ruth Wilson of The Affair in the leading roles, this version of Oslo is shaping up to be the real deal. The plot of the film will tell the story of the secret 1990s Oslo peace accords between Israel and the Palestinian Liberation Organization. In other words, it's a story about people from wildly different backgrounds trying to build relationships and the struggles they face due to overwhelming political turmoil and change. And since this film is based on an award-winning play and backed by some very successful producers, it's clear that HBO wants this project to be a major hit. 
so while there's no release date for Oslo yet, is likely to hit the streaming service later in 2021, just in time for award season. In the same breath is the first of two HBO film documentaries slated for release on HBO Max sometime in 2021. This one is HBO's expose on the COVID-19 outbreak and how it specifically affected China and the United States. In the same breath takes a look at the government response from each country and puts it in a wider global context. The documentary premiered at Sundance in January and South by Southwest Online in March to rave reviews. It currently holds an outrageously positive average of 97% on Rotten Tomatoes. A passion project for Chinese-American director Nan Fu Wang, in the same breath, focuses on the widespread governmental failures in handling the pandemic response by taking a deeper look at the two countries Wang has lived in. After receiving such a positive reception following its festival premiere, hopefully it will find its way onto HBO Max before the end of 2021. Like the rest of Hollywood, HBO Films is champing at the bit to capitalize on the GameStop stock market anomaly that occurred early in 2021. Already, Hulu has released its documentary Game Stop, and a number of other projects are in the works from other studios, including an MGM film, two Netflix projects, and a feature documentary by Console Wars director Jonah Tulis. However, we're pretty sure that HBO's documentary will be something special, given the studio's past track record for creating critically acclaimed documentaries. While the project is still in its earliest stages, Andrew Ross Sorkin of TBTF Productions, Lynn Amato of Crash and Salvage, and Jason Blum of Blumhouse are all on board to serve as executive producers for the film. TV fans probably know Sorkin best as co-creator of the TV drama Billions. It's an interesting mix of producers that will hopefully result in a fascinating expose of one of the most interesting companies of the year. Check out one of our newest videos right here. Plus, even more Looper videos about your favorite movies are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.